So welcome on board the Benetton Force 27 SC Seascape Edition. The boat is building on the Seascape Legacy and the mission of the boat is to bring extraordinary high performance and racing sailing experience into the hands of the recreational sailors. The complete SE Seascape Edition range is defined by the racing background of the naval architect Samuel Manuart and the Seascape team. The first 27 SE is bringing sailing experience so far reserved for professional offshore racers in easy to manage and accessible package. With modern building technologies, unique design and simplified boat handling, we want to encourage owners to expand their comfort zone and really connect with the elements. The international community of like-minded sailors will make sure that you will really grow with the boat and travel around. And this is all possible because this boat is also trailable. At the same time, the interior of this boat is having many, many things to offer. The complete walkthrough is having two main chapters. So in first, we will address the cruising features and in the interior, there are many more that you might expect. And then in the second, we will finish the day under the sails as we are doing now. But first, let's jump back to the beginning of the day. Welcome inside the Beneteau First 27 SE Seascape Edition. Despite its high performance, racy and sporty nature, you will be surprised how much comfort and uh, smart solution this interior has to offer. On this 8 meter sport cruiser, you will find separated front cabin, there is spacious saloon, boat can sleep up to 6 people, there is fridge, cooking solution, there is even fresh water system and there is completely separate, separated room for the classic marine toilet with black water tank. The interior might look minimalistic, but with a clear reason. We're really careful about the weight. Whatever we were doing, we were always making sure that the solution is lightweight and practical. Second way how we could save quite some weight is also that all the interior parts are functioning as a part of both structure at the same time. So all the parts, ball heads in the front, diagonal attachments, everything is built in um, sandwich construction, vacuum infused. So this really gives this boat incredible stiffness, lightweight, and that's why she can really support any adventure plans you might have. First 27 can comfortably sleep four persons if needed, even up to six. So two in the front cabin, one on each side in the stern. There are optional cushions, this boat is without them. And then two can even sleep here in the saloon. The width of the bird is 60 centimeters, so just barely enough for some nights. Continuing from the entrance area, there is the main electric panel. Uh, the good thing of this position of the panel is that you can easily access it even from the outside. So that means that when you, once you learn the position of the switches, you will, you will press them without any problems also from the outside. First five switches are 12 volt system, which comes as a standard equipment of the boat. And then the, the, the following, following ones are electric, electronical options. Under the first stair, there is a very practical storage space. It will get full almost immediately, but it is a brand new boat. And then under the bottom stair, there is an ice box as part of standard uh, configuration of the boat, well isolated. And it can be upgraded with, electric, uh, with a cooling panel and a compressor, so you get a proper fridge. It's a very practical position, basically immediately next to the table, and you can also very easily reach for some for things from the outside. Behind the bottom stair, there is a dedicated place for the plexi. So this is something that it's usually quite annoying where you put it and it's always making scratches around the boat. So we were thinking about it. This is the place where you put it. Very, I mean, immediately next to the entrance. Volume underneath the bow and these two stern birds is actually not a storage place, but are closed air chambers, which are making this boat unsinkable. With, it's a great, great safety feature, uh, but of course it doesn't mean that there is not enough storage place on this boat. So the area under the benches 
all around the cockpit is a storage place, very easily accessible. In addition, behind the back supports, some more storage place, and then talking, and then of course this is all meant to be more for technical equipment and food and drinks and so. We of course, we were also thinking about the personal belongings, but we did it in a little bit different way, right? So this is, this, these are the crew bags and they are very easily removable. So the idea of these crew bags is that you can easily take them home, you pack at home and you bring them on board, clap them on the hooks and you've basically moved in. So that's how you avoid really annoying repacking in the car or the boat or having the, 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 the transport bags here in the saloon taking space and of course when you will be sailing they will be sliding around and making mess in the, in the saloon area. So very practical solution which is also very very lightweight. There are six bags like that in, on the boat, so four of them you can see here in the saloon and there are two more in the front cabin. Okay, let me move on the other side. So here I would like to show you the cooker holder. It's our cooking solution. Uh, and it really perfectly works for on-the-go cooking. So it's a gimbal for the jet boil or some other uh, gas cookers. It's a really practical solution for on-the-go cooking. So simple pasta, tea or coffee, it's all that you can make here. And this, this, um, this gimbal can be placed also on the, on the other side, so you can always do your meals on the windward, which is of course important for performance when you're doing racing or so. Finishing at the entrance area, I would just like to point out the, the plotter solution. So it's on a swinging bracket. You can use it inside for some long distance racing, for example. And of course, you can find your perfect viewing angle for long runs also looking on it from the outside and hide it when you don't need it. The table is actually sitting on the keel box, which is there because the boat is featuring really unique the key, swinging keel system, uh, which is hydraulically operated. So by standard, the hydraulic pump is manual and you control the, control the, oh, and operate the, the hydraulic keel with the simple ha uh, handle here under the starboard side. Uh, there is an option for an electric upgrade, so you can control the position of the keel by simply pressing the button and it takes 20 seconds to lower or lift the keel. But before I show you how it works, let me move you forward so that you will see how it actually works. So here, here you can see the hydraulic ram which is placed between two high modulus carbon beams. They are at the same time, so they are the, the box supporting the hydraulic ram, and at the same time, they're also the mass support. Let me leave the kill so we will see how little impact on the interior it has and how simple and fast it is. So as you can see, this is all the impact that the lifting of the keel is, act is having on the interior. And what I'm saying that is because this is extremely important in cruising, right? Where we will mostly use the, where we mostly use the, the, the lifted keel. Uh, because there are many, many boats on the market which are having the lifting keel system, of course. But in many cases, the, the lifted keel is really interfering with the interior. So you get a wall in the middle or you have a hole in the middle or so. And it's mostly requiring some special constructions which you don't have with you on board. This lifting kill system really makes you, I mean, really makes getting to shallow places, the first row as we call it, where other boats cannot go. Throughout the video, I'm many times claiming that, or mentioning the modern design of the boat. So one of the application, um, it's actually very well seen in, in, in cruising, right? So at the moment the keel is lifted and because of very, very strong chines, really sharp chines, uh, uh, which are going all along the hull, the boat is very, very wide on the water level, which is generating really high initial hull stability. So that means that even if the keel is lifted now from the two meter draft in down position to one meter at the moment, the boat is still having very, very good stability. And of course, this is important because you will spend the nights and you will sleep on board 
with the lifted keel in the shallow places. And it's important that even in this situation, um, that the boat is, remains stable. Of course, another very important um, uh, consequence of the lifting keel is trailability. So this boat is, despite its 8 meter length, completely, completely trailable. With the lifted keel, the boat sits very low on the trailer, so you're not very somewhere high above. This is good when you're loading the boat or working on the boat. And of course, you have the center of gravity of the boat very low on the trailer. And completely trailable goes gives you, gives you a lot of freedom. So on one hand side, you can actually participate on one design races all around the continent. Um, and this is not a big project. It's really easy to de-rig and trail the boat. Last but not least, trailable boat is also reducing your fixed costs, running costs of the boat, because out of season, you can move the boat out of the water and basically park you at, the at your backyard. I will just move forward to the mid section of the boat in the front cabin, where is few more things to say. And you will be surprised how many different modes this center part has to offer. The room in front of you, mid-section, it's having many different modes. Uh, the most obvious one, of course, is the passage to the front cabin, but there is the sail locker on the starboard side and the classic marine toilet on the port. For further explanation, I will move, uh, move the camera to the toilet room and explain other modes. So in this tiny and really small place, where you find yourself now, we've placed the classic marine toilet with the black water tank. If you check in the back, there is custom made uh, black water tank. So another custom made feature to really perfectly fit into place. And despite a small place, by closing the doors towards the front cabin and towards the saloon, you gain complete privacy when you're using the toilet. The big hatch on top so, uh, provides sufficient ventilation and if needed you can even stand up here because it's really, it's really big. And then by having the doors in the same way as now, there is also the third mode which I'd like to mention and this is when this room becomes a wet room. Uh, and this will be when you will be hoisting and dropping the sails through the hatch. So in most cases, except if you're solo or if it's really too much wind and the water is coming over the deck. Um, in this case, I will come a little bit closer now just, just to, to, to show you. So in this case, you open the, the sail locker, it folds a little bit further down. And when you drop the sail, all the sail will go already on the side. So when you finish, you just simply pull the rope and you clean the, the central part push the sail on the side dedicated for the storage of it and you've basically instantly switched from, from racing or sailing mode to, to cruising on and living on board. Um, there is another, uh, another reason why this is called a wet room. So if there will be some water coming through the hatch, it will all remain in this, in this compartment because the doors are towards the saloon, the, the doors are closed towards the front cabin and the saloon, which means that this living area will com remain completely dry and all you will need to do is cleaning a little bit of water here in this central wet room with the sponge and that's it. So really, really practical and well thought solution. Now let's move to the front cabin for the last few things I have to show in the interior. So welcome in the front cabin. Uh, I have just few more things to say here. Uh, first is the sep is the how the midsection of the of the of the boat we were just talking about becomes the extension of the front cabin. So it gives you a little bit more room a lot of ventilation here on the top through the hatch and of course you gain complete privacy by closing one doors towards the saloon and of course you completely close the toilet which is also very important because we will be sleeping here. Um, in the front cabin there are two more crew bags for personal belongings of the guests in uh, of the guests here and I just want to show you that this is I'm pretty tall and this is really comfortable and long enough berth. In case I will be sleeping here in two, I will move these bags outside or to, into the sail locker, so I gain some more width in the, um, for my shoulders. And then last 
few things. There is the hatch just on top. Uh, we added it for additional ventilation, for additional light to the front cabin, of course. But it's also functioning as a very, very handy food support on the other hand side because we are using the ocean, um, the offshore hatches, which are not sink into the into the deck, but it gives you really nice food support when you are working on the deck uh, from the other side. And when moving all the way to the bow, there is the inspection hatch on the bottom. I'll just point it with my with my with my feet here. So this is a really rare um, safety feature on this length of the boat, especially if we are talking about any about cruisers uh, and uh, it comes from offshore racing. So if we want to encourage you to expand your comfort zone and, 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 and do some long distance racing or cruising, we have also we also to made uh, we also to, to take care of the safety in this case and uh, just above it, there is the anchor locker. So, of course, safety because you need to have anchor at hand all the time. And it also comes handy so you can anchor in the in shallow bays. I hope you found this tour through the interior interesting. So it's time to move, to leave the marina and go out sailing to show you the, sa the boat in its uh, natural environment under the sails. So welcome on Beneteau Force 27 SE. Uh, it's absolutely magnificent sailing day. Uh, in winter sailing day on the Slovenian coast. It's 10, 12 knots of sustained wind and then gusts up to 15. So just perfect for, for what I would like to show you today. The naval architect Samuel Manoart and the Seascape team are both having roots in the long distance offshore racing. And this can be very well seen also in the design of this boat. So we are really taking um, racing solutions fr from the high-end racing boats. We simplify them and that's how we make them available to recreational sailors. The boat is having very flat hull, uh, which is very, very wide on the waterline. And this is how you get very high initial hull stability. And that's very important uh, from the um, user experience point of view, the sailing experience, and how the easy the boat is to handle. Because wide, wider hull and higher uh, hull, initial hull stability gives you much more time to, to react. So the, the, the boat, is star boat starts to heal much slower compared to traditional round hull shapes. So you can see that from position where I'm sitting, I'm in perfect control of all the, all, all the, all the controls. And so starting from the helm, uh, of course, ideal helming position. Uh, then here comes the mainsail controls. So there is a mainsail sheet, uh, which I'm actually not using now because uh, I have very, very wide uh, mainsail traveler with another purchase. There are two dedicated winches for the, for the jeep control. So at the moment I've cross-sheeted the, the jeep sheet on the windward winch. So it's absolutely in perfect reach and I can even trim the jeep from the position where I am. Um, then ex perfectly in reach are also all the other control lines of the main sail. So out hole with a lot of purchase hidden inside the boom. There is the Canningham. So at the moment I will tighten it a bit because the wind picked up. Okay, so I will leave the autopilot to, to do the job. So we really minimize the amount of ropes that are here on the couch roof. Uh, and there are two additional winches here um, so that you have con easy control of all five uh, uh, halyards. Uh, in case you have one winch already full, we've also installed the winch feeders. So, for example, if I would need to cross, I would need to use the windward winch, I can very easily move the, the control rope on the, on, the, on the other side. Of course, that also works in, in the other direction. All the controls are having quite some uh, purchases where needed, so like Canningham and Bank, so that the forcers are easy, are easy to handle. I don't need to mention that actually I was all the time talking about the solo setup which I'm sailing today 
but uh, of course this cockpit is really spacious so actually we can easily add on three more guys so in three or even four so sailing in four or five persons because the cockpit is big enough and this, all these controls are also perfectly fine working also in the full, fully, crewed, uh, fully crewed configuration. I will move the camera on the stern where you will have the best uh, view over, over the downwind. Hoist the jammer to so see you back shortly. So, welcome on the downwind ride. Uh, it's about 20 knots of wind. 16 gusting up to 20 over and as you can see we're having a really nice fast ride this is one of the safest boats on the market in in length category and there are many reasons for that so uh, of course the first criteria that we can say that the boat is safe uh, is the stability and the most important one is that this boat is unsinkable um, and uh, and this is thanks to three separated insubmersibility chambers uh, so that you really have uh, much much more uh, f f volume than actual weight of the boat is actually twice as much um, then uh, on the design side the second very important thing which you can really very well see uh, uh, at the moment sailing downwind uh, is the increased volume of the bow and this gives you especially good control in downwind sailing and prevents nose diving all the way in the bow is the crash box so this is to prevent uh, damaging and any water intake especially if you go for some offshore and night sailing important detail it's also 60 centimeter high railing uh, this gives you a lot of support, especially when working uh, on the deck. And because of all the mentioned safety features, this boat is actually having a B category. So it is offshore capable. Last but not least, it is a safety feature also that the boat is having a swinging kill. Because in case you would hit the ground, uh, the kill will swing back. So you will not, you will especially, that's especially important when the boat is doing uh, high speeds as now because uh, in case you hit, the, hit, uh, hit something at higher speeds, so not planning uh, this seat, the, the, the structure of the boat, we are very unlikely be able to take these loads. And in our case, the release valve open the kill, kill swings back and you save the structure of the boat. And on this point, I'm not just, uh, I'm actually talking from the experience here. <laughs> As you can see, we are doing 11, 12 knots. There is already some waves and I have absolutely no, con no problem to control the boat. Uh, and I'm not fighting with the tiller. So as you can see, uh, it's really light. Um, and that goes thanks to the design of the, of the steering system. The rudder blades are very much on the side of the hull, plus that they are angled, right? So they are angled. So this means that the when the boat starts to heel, one is always almost or perfectly vertical in the water. So that means that the, uh, the, the forces are lower, plus that also the, the rudder blades are very well balanced. Half of it is in front of the X. And all that results in really, really smooth and perfectly easy uh, control over the, over the boat. So I still owe you some more details about the rig of this boat. So we do have a carbon rig. So this is the mast without any backstay or runners. Because of the mast design without the backstay, we can allow ourselves to have a huge, main, a huge square top mainsail so this gives you an extra performance. Because of that, the rig needs to be, you need to control the tension of the rig a bit more, but you are also thinking about it because the, all the shrouds are continuous, so you can control the rig tension uh, from the deck, so you don't need to climb the mast. And this, can be also, this, can also, this can be also done on the go on the water. Mainsail is fitted on the, on, the, on the aluminum track along the mast, with the uh, ball bearing uh, travelers so any hoisting and dropping is really easy including reefing 
And on this point, I would like to point out there are three reefs on the mainsail. So you can actually sail in the complete range uh, for, uh, of the B category, which is even up to eight befores. If I move uh, to the front sails, uh, there is jib, uh, which is relatively big because uh, the mast is positioned very much in the middle of the boat. Another thing which is coming from the, from the offshore uh, racing boats, uh, so that we, with, in this way we increase the, increase the sail area on the front sails and again increase the potential of uh, the performance and the sailing potential of the boat. Uh, so the jeep can be also furled as on this boat. Um, moving on on the flying sails, um, the boat is having two general halyards. The mast head top for a, a pretty big runner. It's an 80 square meter runner design, uh, for, the, for, for really deep downwind sailing and lighter conditions. At the moment we are sailing with, uh, with the Reacher, uh, 64 square meters on the fractional halyard of course. Um, and uh, as soon as you're on the fractional halyard you really don't need to be afraid uh, because of the fact that there is no backstay or runners because the, the side shrouds can e really perfectly and easily handle all these loads. Uh, on the fractional halyard you also have the code zero which is fulfilling the complete sail inventory. There is also the stay sail. Uh, it's a structural uh, furling jeep moved inside with special two to one halyard and the attachment on the deck. So this is used for stronger upwind sailing. It can be also used uh, to, in combination with the, with the fractional genaker or coat. Small detail here on the stern. There is a bathing ladder, which is great when you go cruising. And we designed it in a way that it also functions as a safety equipment uh, because you can use it for reboarding in case of uh, man overboard situations. The bathing ladder can be opened from the water. So, on the start I said that the promise uh, and the mission of this boat is making this uh, um, racing and offshore racing experience which is uh, reserved mostly for, for professional races to make it available also for the recreational sailors. No matter if you're having some racing ambitions in one design uh, long distance races uh, or if you're having adventure cruising ambitions, in both cases this boat will support you with its seaworthiness, safety, really easy boat handling and absolutely superb sailing experience, planning downwind like we are doing now without any stress and connect you with the elements and the nature. I hope that uh, you did enjoy this, uh, this uh, walkthrough. Uh, and um, that we proved the talking points and um, I wish you fair winds and many many fast miles.